Welcome to this full step-by-step -step Qcoin trading bot tutorial. In this video I will show you everything you need to know to set up your own Qcoin trading bot. I will also go over how to get the best parameters so you can optimize profits and why and when to use the advanced settings. Now with all of that being said, let's get right into the video. Now the first thing you want to do is to go over to trade and click on trading bot. You'll then be sent over to this page and then you want to go over to spot grid and click on create bot. Now in this video I will show you how to set up the spot grid bot, but if you want to learn how to use the futures grid, make sure to watch this video I've made explaining you step by step how to set up your own futures grid bot. Now you just want to go ahead and click on create bot. You'll then see this pop up and you'll get the AI parameters. Now these are the settings that the AI of Qcoin recommends you using. There isn't much to customize here, however what you can do is to go over to this pair right here and select the currency or cryptocurrency pair you would like your bot to trade on. For me, this will be BTC USDT, and you can then just click on it. Now just a quick note, I've noticed that a lot of people go over to the volatility and click on the most volatile pairs. Now please be aware that after green comes red, and after red comes green, which basically means that if your coin did a 10x in the past 24 hours, you will have one hell of a red candle afterwards. And trust me, you don't want to be part of that. So please only invest in coins that you actually believe in. Now with that being said, all you can do over on the AI parameters is to change the total amount of your investment. You can also click on use BTC in this case if you want to fund your bot using the cryptocurrency itself. Now because you want to know how to find and how to get the best parameters, you want to go over to customize. Here you can customize the price range, the number of placed orders, the total investments and like I said, at the end of this video I will also show you how to use and when to use the advanced settings. Now the first thing you want to do is to decide the price range. So that's the lowest price and the highest price you want your bot to trade in. What I do to decide my price range is to go over to tradingview.com and then I go over to chart and click on this icon right here to search for the currency or cryptocurrency I would like to trade. In this case that's BTC USDT. Now there's three time frames I chart on. It's the one hour chart, the one day chart and the one week chart. For this example I'll be charting using the one hour chart However, it will be the same process for any other cryptocurrency pair. Now if you're charting on the 1 hour chart, your trade will most likely last for a couple of hours to maybe 1 or 2 days. On the 1 day chart, your trade is most likely gonna last a couple of days to maybe 1 week or a week and a half. And if you're charting using the week chart, your trade will most likely last for a couple of weeks to maybe even a few months. Now with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and select the 1 hour chart. Now what you want to do is to zoom out and look for any lines of supports and resistance. If you're not sure how to find them, I will show you right now. But before I will show you, you want to go over to the lines right here and click on the horizontal line. You can also use the shortcut Alt H. Now you just want to look for any areas of support and resistance. Now I see one right here, right here and right here. And if I zoom out a little bit more, I can also see one right here. If you're not sure how to find these lines, it's actually pretty simple. As you guys can see, this blue line right here has a touch point with the chart or the price action right here, right here, right here and right here. If your line has more than 3 touch points with the chart, it's a valid support or resistance. You can also see that if I was to draw a trend line, you can see that even this would be a valid trend line. Why? Because it has a touch point right here, right here and right there and also right here. So I myself got 4 blue lines on my screen as of right now. One right here, this one right here which is based on the price action going on here. This line is based on the price action going on here. It's functioning as a resistance, then a resistance, a bull trap, resistance, resistance and another resistance. Then right here it's actually functioning as a support and then the price breaks through and doesn't come up anymore. And the last and final line has a touch point here, here and here. And also one right there with the wick. Now I'm charting on the 1 hour chart, which basically means that my price range as of right now is from $44,000 to $52,000, which is only $8,000. However, if you're charting on the weekly chart, you'll see that if you're going to look for any supports or resistances, you will most likely have a way, way, way larger price range. Now once you've found these lines of support and resistance, you also want to take a look at the stochastic RSI. If you have not added this indicator, just go over to indicators and search for stock. RSI. You'll then see the built-in stochastic RSI and you can click on that. Now the stochastic RSI tells you whether or not the price action is in oversold or overbought territory. 
Right now, Bitcoin on the one hour chart is in the overbought territory. On top is the overbought, right here is the neutral, and below that is the oversold. Now as you can see, when the stochastic RSI goes into the oversold territory, in most cases there comes a correction downwards over to the oversold territory. So because the Bitcoin price as of right now is in oversold territory, it's likely that there is going to be a correction in the price action. You can also see that the last time that the stochastic RSI made a reset, Bitcoin had a correction of 3%. So based on that, it's likely that Bitcoin is going to have another correction of 3% before it will go upwards once again. So now I know that if Bitcoin is going to have a correction, it will most likely not go through my line, which is at 45,600 USDT. So the lower end of my price range is going to be 45,600. And the high of my price range is going to be right here, which is 5, let's say 52000. And I'm also going to use the price range low and high as my stop loss and take profit. If you don't plan on making trades and you just want to hold on to your coins, it's probably not a bad idea to have a larger price range. But for this example, I'm going to set up my bot for a trade, so that's why my price range isn't as large. Now the number of placed orders, or also known as the grid interval, can go up to 100 grids. Like when I change my price to 100,000 USDT, you can see that I'm able to have a number of total placed orders up to 100 grids. So if you're just planning on holding onto your coins, you might want to make sure that your price range is big enough to have at least 80 grids in them. Now grids are a little bit harder to explain, however I will go ahead and give it my best try. So let's say this is our maximum price and our lowest price. Now a grid is basically a line that is on every level. I'm not gonna make this chart very good looking, I'm sorry for that, but it's just for the example. Now in this case there's 15 grids. The lowest price, there's 13 in between and the highest price. Now what a grid is, is basically if the price as of right now is right here and it goes down, your bot will buy into the coin every grid it goes down. And when the grid goes up, or the price action goes up, I mean, the grid will be sold. So this grid right here will sell right here. This run will sell right here, and this one will sell right here. Now when it goes down, it will buy once again, because it's a bot and it can do that very, very consistent. And this is basically how you can optimize profits while holding a coin as well, which I think is really cool. Now if the price goes up higher than you ever bought your coin set, you might be like, well, how do I sell? Uh, you don't. It's pretty simple, your bot doesn't sell, so it's basically neutral. And then when the price goes back down, your bot will buy again. And if it goes up at any point once again, it will sell. So this is how the profits work. Now the grids, I just want to show this to you because it's important to understand what you're doing with your money. The grids are basically connected. This is a grid pair, this is a grid pair, this is a grid pair. And you can see that this one has not sold yet. A simple way to understand it is the grid you buy at will be sold one grid higher. You can also see that the first time you bought into this coin, in this example, would be sold right here. Even though I didn't make it red in your thoughts, this should be red. That's a mistake of mine, I'm sorry. And then these are the grid connections once again. Now I hope I explained the level of grids clearly to you. If not, let me know in the comments down below so I can explain it to you further. But this is basically how grids work. So if you decide to go with three grids, you have the highest price, one grid right here, and the lowest grid right here. If you decide to go with 100 grids, you will have this times 5, 6 or 7, so there will be a lot of trades going on. I myself always like to go with higher grids, even though the profit pair grid will be lower, there will be more trades going on, and that's why I will go with the maximum placed orders available, which for me as of right now is 30. You can then see the interval in USDT, which is over 200 USDT, however if I was to go with like 5 grids, you can see that the interval goes up to 1300 USDT. So now that you've set up the price range and the grid interval, you can scroll down and fill in the total investment. Now like I showed you before, you can also click on use BTC to fund your trade using Bitcoin from your trading account. So now I want to show you how to use and when to use the advanced settings. The advanced settings are located at the bottom of your spot grid pop-up and you'll then see the stop price, the take profit price and the entry price. And like I told you before, I've set up my bot to be a trade. So this is going to be my stop loss and this is going to be my take profit. And now I just want to show you the trade we've just set up. I'm going to click on long position because I want Bitcoin to go up. You can then see that the trade we've just set up has a risk reward ratio of 3.2, which is pretty good. So I will also go ahead and enable the stop price or stop loss and the take profit. 
Now the stop price for me will be at my price range low and my take profit will be my price range high. It needs to be a little bit above that so I will just add one USDT. So if you're planning on trading it's a good idea to enable the stop price and the take profit so you don't need to look at your chart 24 hours and you also don't need to worry about what happens to the price of Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency if you're going to sleep. And the entry price is the price at which your bot will enter into the trade. Now for me the current price is the price I would like to enter at. But if for example you would like to enter only right here. Now the price you would like to enter at in this scenario is 46,500 USDT. So then you will need to go over to the entry price and fill in 46,500 USDT. And then you have set up your entry price. So this is how to set up your spot grid bot and then you just want to click on create. So as of right now I've got two bots running already. Now I just want to show you the details of my bot. You've got the buy and the sell orders, which are all the orders that are open for your bot as of right now. You can also go over to your order history and you can then see the grid profits, pair trade if it's a sell order and if it's a buy order you will just see that it bought at a certain price. Now if you want to see the pair, so the buy and sell pair like I showed you before with the grids, you just want to click on it and you can then see the sell order and the corresponding buy order, which I think is a pretty awesome feature. You can also go over to parameters or even set a stop price or a take profit. You can also go over to profits. You'll then see the assets running in USDT, today's profit, and you can look at your total profit or daily profit at certain time frames. And if you want to look at your historical profits, just click right here and you'll then see all of the trades you've done in the past. If you found this video helpful, let me know by leaving a like or subscribing to my channel for more tutorials about cryptocurrencies.